Don't pick your skin, big bandage. Hey guys, it's my face story here today. We are in my kitchen, kitchen, and I'm going to show you how to make a DIY African black soap. This video also qualifies for the Vanish Kit giveaway. So yeah, the question that you have to answer below is what scent would you add to your own DIY African black soap? And honestly, I got this like step-by-step -step instructions off WikiHow and some other websites. So I'm not really sure how it's gonna turn out. I've never made it before, but we're gonna try our best. Let's get started and see what happens. So here are some things you're going to need. I have a couple of mixing bowls. This is a mesh strainer. I have a wooden spoon, some essential oils. These are plantains, these are different than bananas, and I waited a long time to do this, so these are pretty overly ripe. Hopefully that's okay. Um, this is shea butter. This is pure shea butter. My phone doesn't do the focus thing or my camera, so just believe me, it's shea butter. Um, and then this is my mold. We're gonna use these little pie molds. And then instead of a double broiler, my pot is kind of dirty, um, we're going to do like a makeshift one with a glass bowl because I did not want to buy one. So that is everything that you're going to need. Oh yeah, did I say? Yeah, essential oils. So let's get started. Let's do it. Okay, so I basically just peeled the plantains. So I'm going to put them on a baking sheet, which I did not show before. I'm just gonna to try to spread them out as much as I can. And we are going to roast these in the oven, I believe, at 350 degrees. Um, and then the inside, I mean, if they weren't like overly ripe, you could totally use these to make something else. I'm probably just gonna pitch them because it's no bueno. So we're gonna get rid of that, homie. So I'm going to stick these in the oven. All right, so here they are roasting. It's only been about mm, five or six minutes, so I would say it's probably just gonna have to roast for about 15 minutes altogether. So I would say it has been about 20 minutes now, and as you can see, they are pretty brown. Um, you can kind of smell it as well, and they're pretty dried out. So yeah, that was at 350 degrees for 20 minutes, and now we're going to turn it on the broiler and we're going to fluctuate between 250 and 500 degrees and we are going to burn these skins. Um, the reason you want to burn them is because the ashes can create a lye mixture and lye is super helpful at uh, cleaning, just like, I think it's like in everything. So it's in car soap, it's in hand washing soap, it's in face soap. So yeah. This is a natural way to get lye. Okay, so now here are the ashes after being in the broiler for about 10 minutes. Um, as you can see, they're super smoky. And from what I read online, if you have like a tight fitting pot that is more preferred, um, so like a pot with a lid that you can put in the oven because there is a good chance that they will catch on fire. Um, it is ashes and you're going back and forth between varying temperatures, so. Yeah, mine haven't caught on fire yet, but I'm going to probably leave them in for about 15 minutes. Um, and I've just kind of been breaking them up with a spoon so that they can kind of cook a little bit faster. All right, so it was a lot faster than I had anticipated. It only took about 15 minutes in the broiler um, to do two whole plantain skins. And I'm just going to crush up the ashes. And then once they are, you know, completely crushed into a powder, then I will add them to the water mixture. Okay, so now we're going to add the ashes to the water. This is as thin as I could get them or as small chunks as I could get them. So we're just going to slowly add. And then I'm just going to stir them in with a spoon. So I've just been stirring this wooden spoon a couple of minutes. And it is pretty chunky, um, but I think that's gonna be okay because we're about to boil this. And then after you boil it, you will strain off the remainder and whatever you strain 
um, should be the ashes leached into the water, which creates the lye mixture. So I think the chunky monkey is okay. So now that the mixture has been brought to a boil, um, we are just going to turn the heat down and then I'm going to strain and discard of the ash and the rest should be a potassium hydroxide mixture. Um, which again is leached from the ashes into the water. All right, so now I'm going to carefully um, try to strain these ashes. Oh, and I spilled. That's okay. So yeah, that actually does look a pretty good color. Um, I'm pleased with that and hopefully it will turn out. So here is two cups of shea butter that I am going to be, well, if you have a double broiler at this point, actually, you can put it in the top portion of that. Um, we just want to slowly melt this, and then we are going to add the potassium hydroxide mixture. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to use a glass bowl that kind of fits snugly into my pot because I don't have a double broiler, whichever works best for you. Here it is, slowly melting. Can you hear my oven making that loud noise? <laughs> it's old. Okay, so our base oil is completely melted and again, you can use any base oil. You could use coconut oil, palm oil, I use shea butter. Um, and I really actually ended up only using about one and a half cups because it was getting to be too much oil in my little pot. Um, so now, unlike traditional African black soap, I'm going to add some essential oils. I'm going to add mm, probably about seven drops of tea tree and seven drops of lavender. So that was the tea tree. There we go for the lavender. And then I'm just going to stir that in keeping it on low heat. And then we are going to add our ash water mixture. And apparently the soap is supposed to form on top and then we're gonna scoop it out and put it into these cute little, I don't even know what this is, little star-shaped molds. Hopefully it works, we'll see. Okay, so now I'm finally adding the water lye mixture. Okay, that was hard to do with one hand. I'm surprised it all fit. Weird. Okay, so now I stir it over low heat and a waxy substance is supposed to form on top. Hopefully it does. And then we will scoop it into our pans as it forms. Why you gotta be so loud, stove? It actually does look pretty good and it smells pretty good too, so I'm excited. And if you guys have like um, cocoa pods or leaves or anything like that, that would also be really great for African black soap. So I think this is the waxy substance that they're talking about. Um, I don't really know how to separate it from the oil though, so we're gonna try to figure that out so we can start scooping it into the molds. So I actually found some rose petals, some lavender buds, and some small rose buds that I had um, using them in essential oil, so I figured that I would add it to the soap. Um, you know, just in case it doesn't work out, maybe add it to a couple and then I can use it as a body wash or give it as a gift, homemade gift to someone for Christmas. All right, so this is the final product. Rose petals, rose buds, lavender buds, and plain. So we're gonna let it cure for about two weeks. Uh, I'm honestly not sure if it turned out right or not. It seems pretty liquidy. I think it's supposed to be more waxy. But yeah, that is it. I'll have to do a video update and let you guys know. Don't forget to leave a comment and make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, and if you want to enter the giveaway below, comment which oils you would add to your own DIY soap. Alright, that's it. Bye!